today we will consider some solved examples on the topic of superconductivity. The first example concerns the critical current and critical current density. So, the critical current density and the critical current for a long wire of lead at 0 Kelvin. Long means the length is very long in comparison to the lateral dimensions. It is a wire of circular cross section and radius five millimeter. We are told that the critical field at 0 k for lead is 803 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla. So, this is the data given and we have to find the critical current for which we go back to Ampere's theorem which gives the magnetic field at a distance r from a long wire. So, this is given by the Ampere circuital theorem. where I is the current and in this case obviously, the d L is going to give you B is constant. So, this will be B times 2 pi r. So, if this is the critical field, this will be the corresponding critical current. So, I C will be B C into 2 pi r divided by u naught. So, that uh, we have to simply substitute the values the radius is given as 5 millimeters divided by 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 amperes. So, this then simplified works out to 2 the critical current is 2007. 0.5 amperes and the corresponding critical current density works to be this. The next problem is a continuation of this where we are asked to calculate the critical current density at 4 k instead of 0 k. And for this we need the additional data regarding the transition temperature for lead and that is given to be 7.193 Kelvin. So, we start from 
the expression for the critical magnetic field at any temperature in terms of the critical magnetic field at 0 k that is the parabolic law. So, substituting these values the B c at 4 k works out to be 555 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla. So, going working back on the critical current density in the same way as in last problem we get this as 1.77 into 10 to the power 7 ampere per meter square. Next problem is about a sample of mercury. We are given that the mass number is 202 and we are also told that there is an isotopic dependence of the form m to the power alpha let us use the same symbol m here isotopic mass T c is constant where alpha is also given to be 0 0.5. The transition temperature is given as 4.153 k. So, with all these values we have the relation 202 to the power 0.5 into 4.153 equal to we are asked to find the transition temperature for the isotope of mass 200. So, substituting the values we get a number the result as T c is 4.174 Kelvin. It is this isotopic dependence of the critical temperature which gave a clue especially with this value of alpha equal to 0.5 which gave a clue to the mechanism of superconductivity the phonon mechanism because if phonons are involved then the mass there will be a mass dependence which is given by the simple harmonic oscillator model as 0.5. Of course, there are many instances where this isotopic dependence is satisfied with a different value of alpha. This is because there can be many mechanisms other than phonon mechanism and there can be unharmonicities as well. So, this is not a very this is not always the case that this relation is satisfied, but in the case of mercury this relation is found to be satisfied to a considerable degree of accuracy. Then the next problem is about a thin film of niobium. at 0 k again. We are asked to find the upper frequency limit of photon which is transmitted through a thin film through a thin film. at 0 k. For which we are given the data that the energy gap of niobium at 0 k is given 
as 30.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 electron volts. So, we are given this energy. So, we have to simply set this equal to h nu. So, the upper frequency limit corresponds to the frequency at which the energy of the photon just equals that of the energy gap. So, the corresponding where h is the Planck's constant. So, the upper frequency limit works out to be second inverse or hertz. We are also asked to find the corresponding wavelength. And that works out to be 0.4 millimeters, which is in the microwave range. So, it is the microwave photons which can be transmitted. The next problem talks about a general superconductor, an infinite superconducting slab. So, we have the next figure shows the geometry. You have it is bounded by two parallel planes. Perpendicular to the y axis at y equal to plus minus d. So, this is y is d and this is y is minus d. So, there is a magnetic uniform magnetic field applied along the z axis. We are asked to take the boundary condition that the B parallel, the parallel component of the field is continuous at the interface. So, that is the boundary condition. So, we are asked to find the magnetic induction B, the diamagnetic current density J s and the magnetization density at a point within this superconductor. So, this is a problem which concerns the application of the London equation. So, we start from the London equation. Del square B equals B by lambda L square the corresponding one dimensional equation is d square b b d y square equals b by lambda l square. So, this is a second order differential equation for which the solution is known to be b 1 exponential y by lambda l plus B 2 exponential 
minus y by lambda l. So, that is the expression for the magnetic induction as a function of y within the superconductor. Now, we apply the boundary conditions. So, in region 1 in the figure, y is negative. When y is negative in region 1, y is less than 0. So, if that is so, the first term in this solution will be bounded, while the second term will not be bounded. So, this will go. So, we have B of y, we will have only B 1 exponential y by lambda l for minus b less than y less than 0. And we can also apply the boundary condition b of minus d is b 1 exponential minus d by lambda l equals b 0. So, B 1 is B 0 exponential D by lambda L. By a similar argument, so that we can also write P of y as B 0 here yeah, substituting exponential in this. So, y plus b by lambda l. We can follow a similar line of argument for region 2 and get the solution as b of y is B 0 exponential B minus y by lambda l. So, we have to now match it, match these two solutions at y equal to 0. So, B 0 is B B of 0, B at y equal to 0 is B 0 exponential d by lambda l. So, that is the magnetic induction which was asked to be found. So, correspondingly the magnetization is B of y equals B 0 plus mu naught m of y is the standard result. Therefore, m of y from b of y is given as 1 by mu naught into b of y minus b naught. So, plugging the value the expression for b of y, the magnetization m of y is b naught by mu naught into exponential d minus y by lambda l minus 1, where y is negative in region 1 and positive in region 2. We are also asked to find the limiting form of the susceptibility. The magnetic susceptibility is related to the magnetization. How? 
the susceptibility is given by the standard relation mu naught m of y by b naught. So, that will be b of y substituting for m of y by b naught minus 1. So, for d very small compared to the London penetration depth lambda l b of y is almost the same as b 0. So, chi is 0 that is just outside or just within within a short distance inside the superconductor. Whereas, for d very large compared to the London penetration depth b of y is 0 this is Meissner effect complete flux exclusion and the chi turns out to have a perfect diamagnetic value of minus 1. We pass on to another question in which we are asked to calculate the frequency of radiation emitted by a Josephson junction. when the junction is biased with a voltage of 5 micro volts. The solution is straightforward from the Josephson equation the frequency is 2 E V by H, where V is the biasing voltage and E is the electronic charge, H is the Planck's constant. So, substituting for all the numbers and that would be 2.41 into 10. This will be a microwave frequency gigahertz. We next consider a type 1 superconductor. in which the transition temperature is given to be 7 k probably lead has a slope d b c by d t the rate of change of the critical magnetic field is minus 25 milli tesla per k at t c. With this data, we are asked to estimate the critical field at 6 k and then calculate the jump in the specific heat. At T c. To do this, we start from again the parabolic law. And d b c by d t differentiating is minus t c 0 by t c square into 2 t. Now, d b c by d t at t c is given. So, substituting this so b c 0 at absolute 0 is just minus T c times D b c by D t at T c 
divided by 2. So, substituting the values this works out to 87.5 milliliters. Therefore, using the parabolic law it is quite easy to find the, the critical magnetic field at 6 k substituting the values this works out to be 23.2 milli tesla. The jump in the specific heat at T c the subscript n and s means normal and superconducting and this was done in the lecture and given as So, substituting all these values, this gives me 3481.5 joules. Okay. We next consider niobium. We are told that it has a density of 8.5 into 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cube and it donates one conduction electron per atom. So, we are asked to calculate the London penetration depth lambda L of superconducting niobium in nanometers. Again, it is a substitutional problem in which we use the expression for the London penetration depth as where q is q s is 2 e and m is also 2 m where e and m stand for the electronic charge and mass respectively. N s is the concentration of supercurrent carriers Cooper pairs. In order to find the concentration of Cooper pairs, we just take the density by atomic weight times the Avogadro number. So, that works out to be 5.505 into 10 to the power 28 per meter cube. Well, it should strictly be divided by 2. So, the London penetration depth works out to be 11.33 nm. Next is a question about a superconductor which is in a magnetic field superconducting lead in a magnetic field of 20,000 ampere per meter because of the unit I have used H C and not D C. So, what temperature should it be cooled for this to be superconducting in this magnetic field. So, again the critical magnetic field so we know the critical transition temperature of lead and uh, We have to find the T because that is the temperature to which it should be cooled, and the field is 20,000 ampere per meter, which corresponds to BC, corresponds to in Tesla mu naught HC. So, it will be 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 into 20 2 into 10 to the power. So, that works out to be 0.025 tesla. 
substituting this value T is readily found to be 5.96 K. We have to cool the lead sample below 5.96 K in order that it is superconductive. Next, we are given the London penetration depth of niobium as 65 nanometers and its Ginzburg Landau coherence length. standard symbol for it is psi g l is given to be 12.3 nanometers. So, the Ginzburg land of kappa parameter which is crucial for determining whether it is a type 1 or type 2 superconductor is the ratio of. So, that works out to be 5.6 in this case, which is greater than 1 by root 2. So, the Ginzburg Landau criterion for a type 2 behavior is that this kappa should be greater than 1 by root 2, which is the case. So, it is a type 2 superconductor. We are also asked to find the magnetic field for which the flux will be completely excluded from a type 2 superconductor when the magnetic field is the upper critical field. B C 2 and that was found from the discussion of the Ginzburg Landau theory as phi naught by 2 pi psi g l square, where phi naught is the flux quantum equal to h by 2 e and psi g l is already given. So, plugging these numbers in, we obtain the critical magnetic field, upper critical magnetic field. So, that turns out to be 2 tesla. Next, we go to a question about high temperature superconductors. They have very short coherence length. This is an experimental finding. We are asked to explain why. We know from the BCS theory that if we have a high T c, which is the case in these superconductors, this means large binding energies. for Cooper pairs. The standard symbol is delta. Now, the delta is given by P delta P by M, because we know that the kinetic energy is P square by 2 M. So, delta E is P delta B by 2 M. So, this is the relation between delta and. So, this large value of the delta gives you a large uncertainty in delta P and the uncertainty relationship tells us that the product of the uncertainties in the momenta and the position delta x, delta p 
the order of h cross by 2. So, if the uncertainty in the momentum p is large, the uncertainty in position is small. This explains why the coherence lengths are short. We now consider a question again regarding lead. We are given the energy gap of lead as 1.4 milli electron volt and the transition temperature is 7.2 K as we already know. So, we are asked to find is it a weakly coupled superconductor. We know the condition for weak coupling in the BCS theory is that is the condition for weak coupling. In the weak coupling limit, we also know that the ratio of delta, the energy gap to K B T C is 1.76 according to B C S theory. So, we are given the values of delta and T C. So, it is simply a question of checking how these values compare. So, taking this ratio delta by k b t c for lead from the given data it comes to be 2.2 certainly much higher than 1.76 the BCS value. So, the conclusion is lead is not a weakly coupled superconductor. It is what is called an intermediate coupling 